Hey, today we're gonna go through the collector's editions guide for the game Bloodborne. This is a really big, heavy book for the base game of Bloodborne. As you know, I found these books on a flea market for a bargain price. And I've been really looking forward to making these ASMR videos together with you. Here on our front page is a rune looking thing. And the back side has another sigil and it just says fear the old blood. Leave a comment you have played this game before and if you recommend it. So let's get into this video. Thank you. You can actually see that the book is in a really good condition. It has minor scratches and no water or smoke damage done to the pages. It's clear white and it looks really good. Inside has no tearing as well. A hunter must hunt. When we made the official guide to Dark Souls, we didn't really know what we were getting into. We hadn't worked with FromSoft before, and though we were played and loved Demon Souls, we hadn't got a real look behind the systems that make it work so well. You might think that by now, Bloodborne, we would know what to expect from Mr. Miyazaki and his team. But Bloodborne refuses to keep things simple or follow a pattern. We had to completely rethink how to structure the guide and even then it often defied our attempts at order. We care a great deal about Bloodborne and we want this book to be accurate and useful long after the game's release. So we have continued testing and writing long past our initial deadlines. We visited FromSoft to talk with Mr. Miyazaki and been able to add, as a result, a better understanding of the game is possible. The detailed attack data in the arsenal and entire chapter and the area breakdown of the progression guide to give you the power to plan new ways to play long after you have seen the hidden ending. This book isn't going to make Bloodborne easy. The maps might let you know where the blood rock is, and the text will tell you how to reach it, but you will still have to get past those winter lanterns without getting frenzied to death before you can blink. The beast cherry will tell you to use sedatives, and the training manual says to keep your insight low. And maybe if you can use the lore index, you can figure out why having less insight might make frenzy weaker in the first place. There is a reason for everything in Bloodborne. And if you study its many parts close enough, you might be able to figure them out. And that, we hope, is the real value of this guide, its ability to provide some insight. Then we have the chapter overview. Chapter 1, training manual. Chapter 2, hunting grounds. Chapter 3, the beast cherry. Chapter 4, the chalice dungeons. Chapter 5, arsenal and attire. Chapter 6, hunter's appendices. And here's the whole table of contents and what side it's on. Art and interview. Start on page 534, so this is a very large book. Chapter 1, Training Manual. This chapter will introduce you to the rules and systems that make up Bloodborne. Knowing this well will help you avoid some of the countless deaths that await you within the nightmare and generally make your time with the game more enjoyable. The early portion of this chapter provides very basic hint to intended for players new to FromSoft games 
The latter sections are full of technical knowledge for experts. The more you play it, the more you question. You have started to mount up. If you really want to make sense of things, all the answers are here. Getting started. This section will explain the finer points of starting a new character. It will also cover the HUD and the basics in game menus, as well as general systems related information that new players should be familiar with. We have savings and loadings and the character creation. When you create a character, you can enter a name. Choose the character's gender, select the general age, pick an origin, and customize your character's appearance. Name, gender, age, and appearance are cosmetic only and no gameplay effect. Your character's origin, however, does affect the game. The different... I guess, origins are... Milk Toast, Lone Survivor, Troubled Childhood, A Violent Past, a Professional, Military Veteran, Noble Scion, Cruel Fate, and Waste of Skin. This is the user interface, I guess. Menus and HUDs. Different. Quick items and leveling up and stats. Vitality, strength, endurance. How to upgrade up weapons, left handed weapons you can use. About gems and runes, starting a new game. Combat explained. No matter how excellent your strategy is, it doesn't mean anything if you can't execute it. Read through the following section for tips on the basic controls and finger points of Bloodborne's combat. Part about the multiplayer system that you can summon help and offering help. Chapter 2 Hunting Grounds To the hunter, the nature of the hunting ground is no less vital than the nature of the prey. Knowledge of boats provides a clear advantage. The areas that you stalk in, bloodborne are rich in complexity and filled with unseen paths, clever shortcuts and obscure dead ends, all waiting to be explored. This chapter will guarantee that you see them all and learn their secrets, be they real or a part of a nightmare. This looks like a gravesite, this picture. How to use this chapter? Welcome to Area Guide chapter. This is no standard walkthrough, nor even a standard area guide. It's actually a hybrid chapter that shows you everything there is to know about each area while also providing a critical route to follow. In these pages, we will take you through the elements that make the chapters work. They have some overview pages that tell you how to use this book. Here we can see a picture of central Yarnam and it does one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then it shows here one area details, two enemies, three insight, four NPCs, five bell ringers, six items, seven map links, and eight landmarks. And the walkthrough pages tell you how to execute where to go to the bosses and events. 
hunter's dream afternoon. You awaken drowsily to the sight of an old graveyard chapel building, set among an idyllic garden. The drowiness and the fog combine to make this feel like a dream. And if where you came from was a reality, then this dream is a big improvement. There is much to learn here. The gravestones. A row of gravestones run along the stairway that leads to the workshop's main entrance doors. Each of these stones is used for childish rituals, with the exception of the lowest ones, which is used for online matchmaking. It talks about all these little places on these pages. And here is the central yarnum. You awaken in a clinic full of rusty medical equipment. Madmen roam the streets and the howls of beasts echo through the city. Behind shuttered doors, yarnumites warn you of your plight as an outsider wandering the streets on the night of the hunt you are along. You also hear rumors of a healing church where you may find information on the pale blood you seek. But first, you must brave the peace of Yarnum and the mindless hunters that stalk the alleyways as the afternoon fades into evening and nightly hunt begins. Here it talks about the different places in central Yarnum, the clinic, the courtyard gate, Gilbert's house, overpass, Main Street. You have the Main Street gate, wagon stairs, silent stairs, hunter's plains, candle shortcut and the plaza. Yarnum is a really big city and here might be the first boss. Father Gascoigne. Gascoigne. I can't pronounce this name. The only thing standing between you and the next area now is Father Gascoigne. And if you fully explored Central Yarnum, you should know you have been able to upgrade your weapon to plus two, which will aid you greatly in the battle. If you spoke to the young girl and got the tiny music box after offering to find her mother, you can use it periodically in the fight to briefly disorient the gas of nine, allowing you to get some easy hits in. Once he's been defeated, a new lamp will appear near the fountain. Make sure to light it, but don't use it just yet. Follow the path around to the upper part the area and drop down into a small rooftop to find the red jeweled brooch that the young girl said her mother was wearing. The brooch can be used to obtain a useful blood gem or you can return it to the young girl to help inform your choice. Please refer to page 510. Cathedral Ward Push open the doors of Oidon Chapel. Within, a shadowy robed creature asks you to search for the city for survivors and bring them to the chapel for refuge. Stepping into the streets of the Cathedral War, you are beset by the servants of the church as well as mad huntsmen. The scent of fading incense drifts through the streets. The residents are using the smell as a ward against the scooch of beasts. Pregnancy grows weaker by the hour, though you can see your gold grand cathedral. The main gates are barred. You'll need to find another way.
here's another boss Vice Amelia Defeating Vice Amelia proves Chris's time from the evening to night And that brings with it some changes Many of the NPC quest lines will progress So make sure you check back with those you have previously spoken with A new lamp will appear in the Grand Cathedral upon Amelia's death And if you interact with the altar at the rear of the cathedral You will be able to view a cutscene A password is revealed and you will need it to get through the door that was blocking your access To the Forbidden Woods Here's old yarn on. A notice posted on the door warns that hunters should turn back. It's clearly directed at you. Discarding the warning, you step into the ruins of old yarn on. The entire town is smoldering mess, charred corpses strewn about in disgusting piles. Still burn and fill the air with the stench of cooked flesh. You hear the cries of beasts echoing off the dead city wall. From afar, a voice warns you to turn back, lest you become the hunted. Here is the boss that is placed, Blood Start Beast. When you reach this area, you should ignore the items near the top of the stairs because a wandering nightmare is sitting nearby and will start running away when you get close. Kill it first and then come back up the, for the other items. Before heading in to face the Bloodstar Beast, you may want to enlist the aid of a friendly face that you have encountered earlier. Healing Church Workshop. The doors of Odeon Chapel, once locked, now stands open. You remember as is from a dream. The advice of German. Seek out the church workshop, for they have much to offer you. The area is overrun with mad huntsmen, and dilapidated buildings crumble to ruin all around. The footing is treacherous. But there is something familiar about the place. You can even smell the scent of incense drifting up from the cathedral ward below. Hemwick Journal Lane. Smoke hangs heavy in the air, like a stiff body on the gallows. Passing through a small wooded area, mad huntsmen and their beasts prowl at every turn. You try to consider the true nature of your hunt, but your mind stumbles and falters at your feet. Find a shallow grave and another, an entire village of them. Within this bizarre cemetery, seemingly mad villager stands about in some particular ecstasy, until they spot you, that is. You have entered Hemwick, keep your eyes peeled, if you will keep them at all. The boss, the witch of Hemwick. Before heading into the boss room, if you break the three barrels used in front of the stairs leading down, the noise will cause a wandering nightmare to drop from the ceiling nearby, and you can kill it for some extra bloodstone shards. The mad ones that you face during the fight with the witch have very poor visibility, so as long as you slowly walk around the area, they will not detect you unless you get close to them. Yargul, unseen village, evening. Did you perish? No. As the coarse weave of the burlap sack shaves your skin, your mind slowly regains clarity. 
you slide onto the disgusting floor as an iron gate screeches to a close. You have been claimed by a fate far worse than death. You are trapped within a horrific city of madmen, kidnapped. But to what dark purpose? As you seek an escaping from this unseen village, you hear terrified whispering ringing in your ears. Do they belong to another victim, or are these frightened murmurs your own? Here's another boss. Dark Beast Pearl. After following the narrow path, you will come face to face with Dark Beast Pearl, a fearsome creature that guards the route back into Old Yarna. Upon defeating it, you will acquire the Spark Hunter badge to increase your shop inventory, and the graveyard of the Dark Beast lamp will become available. Forbidden Woods. Fear the old blood, you speak the password, and the torch passed down from the visor to visor across generations. The door creaks open, and the man who sits beyond is unmoving in death. Who asked for the password, if not he, putting your fear aside, you take up the hunt once more. This shrouded forest, long forbidden by the church, holds a key to your journey. You step cautiously down the path into the full foliage below as the sounds of beasts and men echo through the night. Shadows of Yarnam. The shadows of Yarnam make for a tricky threesome, but you can make things a bit easier by using the tombstone in the center of the area to both split the group up and shield yourself from incoming magic attack. Yosefka's Clinic. If you know this place, you remember it from not long ago. Perhaps it is where you awoke, or where your dream began. You see a different side of it now, though. After the shadow cast by the moonlight quicken your pulse. As you enter, a familiar voice calls out, not in greeting, but in warning, a whispered talk of rescue and true salvation somehow invokes fear. Should you wish to continue as you are now, turn back. But if you seek the truth, no matter how dark, you must onward, you must go. Forsaken Cainer's Castle You find an ancient letter addressed to none other than yourself. Following its directions, you board a mysterious coach near the large gate of Hemwick. As the coach proceeds, a a massive ancient castle draws near. You approach, and the shield runs up your spine. From the corner of your eye, you see movement. But if you turn to look directly, the night is still. You would be fortunate if it was a mere ghost, for you have a growing sensation that this castle is home to appreciations. Operations far worse, apparitions that smell strongly of blood. Modern Lugarius. The battle with modern Lugarius can be very tough due to the sheer number of projectiles he can launch at you. So always try to use one of the spires on the rooftop to block them. Lecture building. 
you were given a strange stone and told to seek the ancient shrouded church. There was a promise of strength granted by the godhead. But at the appointed location you find that vat of some bizarre substance. Surely it is used for some ritual. As you examine it, the room, you feel pressure building around you. The air feels heavy, except it isn't air. The air, this pressure, is demonic in nature. Your consciousness is squeezed out. When you awake, you find yourself in a school or a nightmare. No, this is certainly both. Nightmare frontier. A dark swirling force tugs at your mind as you pass through the doorway, and you awaken to find yourself in a twisted, disgusting landscape rife with hellish monsters. The stench of a thick poison and raw flesh wafts through the air, and your pulse quickens, echoing off the nightmarish cracks and valleys. You hear a faint, manacled chuckling. This place appears as if it was a together from the night terrors of the wicked. What manner of creature could possibly find pleasure here? Amygdala. The arms of the giant false god. Amygdala can actually be quite difficult to hit with normal weapons, so you may want to consider using ranged weapons to attack its head directly for some easy damage. Birgenworth The night is now well underway. You survived a treacherous journey through the forbidden woods and I overcame every guardian that was set before you. Birgenworth, an ancient place of learning, lies before you. Within lies secrets untold. The answers you seek may lie within with them. But there is something unnerving about this place. The skittlish tapping of a spider leg can be heard in the night, reflected for some concealed location, and the moon looms larger still. And Rome, the vicious spider. Rom is not hostile when you first enter the area, so you can run right up to him without risk, and then only once you hit him will the fight begin. Yargul, Unseen Village You learn true horrors on your last visit to Yargul. This time, the unseen village is a sight beyond horror. Massive, hulking, twisted creatures drag themselves along the streets. Giant demons cling into buildings as if they were mere flies on the wall. In the midst of it all, cultists were about in apparently ecstasy. Bells ring out, beckoning, beckoning to the beast, beckoning to the moon itself, beckoning. Reborn. The red roped bell ringers that are on the upper level of the boss room will constantly throw homing fireballs at you if you try to attack the boss straight away. So the first thing you should do is use the stairs at the back to get up there to kill them all. Upper Cathedral Ward. The upper stratum of the church is a place shrouded in secret secrecy. The highest class of clergy, the chore, make their home here. The choir, an organization of scholars and dreamers, seem to know something. It's as if they have been treated to a glimpse of the truth and peered into the heavens themselves. After all, here we stand, feet planted in the earth. But might the cosmos be very near us, only just above our head? 
Ebrietta's Daughter of the Cosmos. You can find Ebrietta's torment at the far end of the altar of despair, and she will remain so until you hit her to begin the fight. Also and another boss, Celestial Emissary. Lecture Building 2F. Once again, you are returned for more education. The leaders of your Argo, the School of Menaces, seems attuned to this institution. Adrift as is in the nightmare, the presence of massive church giants betrays a connection between Menaces and the Healing Church. But you don't have time to think on that. Let the fear pull you onward. All that lies between madness and yourself is sheer terror. Nightmare of Menaces. At last you have reached the source of the nightmare. Horrific, deformed beasts scour at with the landscape. This isn't a scene out of hell. This is hell itself. What did the school of menaces find? What does Warp them so. How is this nightmare connected to Yarnam herself? Over the howls of beast and man, a baby's cry rings clear. Miracle's wet nurse. It can be extremely difficult to get close to this boss due to the large radius of its multi hits attacks, so you may want to consider using bone marrow ash strengthened pistol shots to weaken it. Hunter's Dream Late Blood Moon. The workshop, home to the hunters and their tools, is an inferno. The dolls greet you calmly and informs you that Jorman awaits by the great tree. As you draw near, you see his face. The lines of worry seem to somehow deeper in the moonlight. You can barely hear his ancient voice over the rustling of flowers in the wind. But he speaks to you of mercy. He speaks to you of the end. The first hunter is here. You are here. The moon is present. Here's the progression guide. Now, what you should do in what order to get through the different places. We used read through. specimens in its wake, and anything that isn't a beast is well on its way to becoming one. If you're going to hunt them, you're going to need to know all you can about them. They all have their weaknesses, even the biggest and most dangerous, and they can all be easily prey for a hunter who knows them well enough. Read the following pages to get to know them in intimate. How to use this chapter? This is a huge chapter full of data and strategies. For the most part, it should be very clear and easy to use, but there are a few things that, now that we think about it, really are worth explaining. So we will go over these here. Talks about categories and groups, item drops, enemy data, dungeon data, and about covering the bosses. Regular enemy, Huntsman. A basic enemy encountered throughout your army is the surrounding and the surrounding areas. Huntsman patrolling the street of central Yarnam will travel set routes which you can use to either avoid or ambush them. The Huntsman, these enemies are, you need 
to attack them in different ways depending on what their weapons and strategies they use. So you're a huntsman with torch and axes, with torch and shield, with a sickle, cleaver, huntsman with cutlass, pitchfork and rifle. So it's the same kind of mob with, with the different strategies of how they attack. Rifle and cutlass, bare fists, oil horn, molotov. Then we have the wheelchair huntsman. Wheelchair bound residents of Yarnam equipped with various firearms. These enemies are barely mobile and unable to do anything but shoot. They effectively, effectively act as a stationary gun turret. Then we have with pistols, Gatling gun, rifle, flame sprayer. And here is another enemy, rabbit dog. Fast agile attack dogs usually found in the company of huntsman enemies, but also sometimes locked in cages are and unable to attack. Beware that if you wait too long before attacking caged rabbit dogs, they may eventually break out of their kennels and attack. Carry on crawl. Large jet black birds that lie on the ground, blend into shadows and can be very hard to spot in the dark areas or among the rubble littering your man streets. They flock together in tightly clustered groups and are almost never encountered alone. Large Huntsman These slowly moving enemies suffer from an advanced stage of the Scotch, and while that makes them stronger than normal Huntsmen, they are not quite transformed enough to suffer the attack bonuses against beasts. Large Huntsman, Torch and Saw Spear, plow, labyrinth rat. Giant rats inhabiting the central sewers of Yarnam in large colonies. Then we have a rotted corpse. Rotting remains of drowned Scrooge. Victims that aren't quite dead. These slow moving enemies have little ability to attack and aren't much of a threat, even in large numbers. church servants that can be found throughout the cathedral ward and these can have a cane, cane and lantern, cane and flame sprayer, cane and pistol, skyed, crucifix, beast patient. Although small and relatively weak on their own, their speed and agility can make them very dangerous in large numbers and they will take full advantage of the fact with clamber ambush tactics. You have a female version. Different beast patient, nation blood beast patient. Hunting dog. Very close to the rabbit dogs. Hemwick grey woman. These grey weird dwelling mad women have very low health but are usually found in groups using their numbers to make up for their individual weakness. Luring them out one at a time using pebbles will help to greatly reduce the threat they pose. They are with sickles, pole iron, and with mullets, cleaver and torch, cleaver and molotov. Snake Parasite 360 degree radius spit a frontal cloud of poison and perform rapid forward combat attacks which have strong directional tracking. The host and snakes together will sometimes perform a grab attack. We have the snake ball, small celestial emissary. Looks like little alien. Parasite larva, cane servant, cane, cane and candle, rapier, lost 
Rock's Child of Antiquity Forsaken Coastal Spirit This is very beautiful A very beautiful woman And with a knife Without a head Different scholars Found exclusively in the lecture building These mutated students have extremely high physical defense With bare hands Flasks A crawler Celestial child Nightmare apostyle Murgo's attendants Unarmed Crossbow Flail Skeletal puppets And labyrinth watchers Very bizarre creatures We clear Dagger Clear and lantern Albert Twin exits, bare hands. So many different, different enemies you need to know about. Pilgrim, Gravekeeper, Scorpion, Chell, Labyrinth, Right Keeper. Watchers, Grave Diggers, and here's strong enemies. Scooch, Beast. Here are all the strategies you need. To kill them Huntsman's minions Executioner And a man-eater boar Just look at that piglet Church giants Brain sucker That looks like a Cthulhu character Mad one Beast possessed soul and kidnapper Eye collector The eye collectors has a lot to do with the lore right of this game I know was it Willem or from the healing church that they were starting to like Collect eyes Might be Willem Small celestial emissary Large snake ball and a blood licker Just look at that Lauren silver beast and giant lost child Large crawler and winter lamp Garden of Ice, Fluorescent Flower Bell Ringer, Cramped Casket Lodge Nightmare Apostyle, Murgo's Chief Attendant Shadows of Yarnam Brain of Menaces, Menaces, and Watch Your Chief Merciless Watchers Evil Labyrinth Spirit That looks really good, I'm really into this art of this character Labyrinth Madman Under Giants and Labyrinth Warriors Something dark. Here's some hunter enemies. Yargul Hunter. And they have the Ludwig's rifle. They have the different items, these ones as well. So you have to use different strategies to kill them. But these are other hunters in the game that are. Intelligence a red car. He, he just looks like a normal guy compared to the other ones. And here are all the bosses. And here's all the strategies for these bosses. 
I don't think it talks way too much about this lore here. And use the strategies as we had a cleric beast. Father Gaskill. I can't pronounce it his name. Blood starved beast. The witch of Hemwick. Look all the eyes. Such a magnificent. Dark Beast Pearl Visar Amelia Shadow of Yarnum Amygdala The False God Martyr Logarius Rome The Vicious Spider The one reborn. Celestial emissary. A Prieta's a daughter of the cosmos. This is what I love about this game. If you look at the character art, you see how beautiful it is, how absolutely terrifying. And inside you your face you can see the cosmos. I love this eldritch horror like Cthulhu, all of that. It's amazing. I really wish for it to be something like that out in the universe one day. Michael Ash, host of the nightmare. Miracle's wet nurse. German. The first hunter. Moon presence. And I challenge dungeon bosses. These are, I guess, from like a dungeon experience one. Under giant. Watchdog of the old lords. Keeper of the old lords. I'm the giant. Put Mary on the sender. It looked very spooky. Forgotten madman and madman's escort. Abhorrent beast. Put Mary on elder. Just look at that ghostly face. Bloodletting beast. Yarnum, Butherian Queen. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Just look at the creativeness and the beauty of this character or this boss you need to kill. This is absolutely stunning. Chapter 4 The Shalish Dungeons Breaking the ancient seals of the vast labyrinths deep below Yarnum can only be done with the holy Shalish Rite. Plumbing their depths in Bloodborne's greatest challenge to its players, and as such brings with it the greatest potential rewards. This chapter will reveal everything about the Shalishes and the rituals and all of the shiny rewards that glitter in their darkest caverns. Let us guide you on your long journey downward. the Shalish Dungeon Overview. The Shalish Dungeons are a large part of Bloodborne, but they are an entirely optional part. The role they play in the game's overall structure is another mystery for the players to solve. Here we will lay out the basics. So it's an optional part of the game, connected with the story, but I guess you don't have to do it to get through. The dungeon game play. Challenge rituals, ritual materials, all the stuff you need, 
Preset Dungeon List Preset All the items you need to carry out the missions down in the dungeons, I guess Maybe I should mention, but all of these pages with pictures has like this really nice to touch texture It feels so nice just to touch this book Mirror Labyrinth. Defeating the Bloodstar Beast in all your arm will allow you to craft the first Shalish Dungeon. In order to craft this dungeon, you will need two ritual blood, which can be found in the ritual horn of all your arm. Mm -hmm. The different steps. And you can tackle the labyrinth straight after completing the first Pterman labyrinth. But you have to level up stuff it says first so you can complete this optional dungeons. Intertomb. Before creating Crafting the intertomb, you should go back to Hemwick Journal Lane to level up and collect twin bloodstone shards for your main weapon. And the lower intertomb. You can see how big these places are. Lower Puthmerian Labyrinth. So huge these places. Mm, full of enemies as well. Mm, puzzles probably. Ailing Loran. And I guess this dungeon just goes down and down and down in. Driving you to madness. Cursed Puthmer and Defilement. I guess you would do this not only for the rewards, but for the knowledge of finding the deepest target secrets. Lower Laura. Isis Gravestone The great Isis challenge required for this dungeon is acquired by defeating Eribeta's daughter of the cosmos. Pythmeran Ail, two of the four red jellies. You are going to need to help craft this dungeon can be found in a chest in the lecture building. Oh look, chapter 5, arsenal and attire. Is there anything more sacred or more lethal than a hunter's tools? The arsenal in Bloodborne is one to be respected by beast and hunter alike. Some very unique tools are at your disposal, and they usually don't come with a training manual, so take the time to study up here. You will learn techniques the healing church doesn't want you to know and gain insight into the arcane tools of hunter's past. And on top of all that, the attire section will make sure you look as serious as a good hunter should. To use this chapter. On the following pages you will find a treasure trove of valuable weapon data. Every column is packed with useful data for comparing between weapons and even different attacks of some weapons. Pay particular attention to the attack table of your favorite weapons, there are often small nuances in the numbers that you may otherwise miss. We have the saw cleaver. 
some different tactics for the weapons. So spear. Hunter axe. Threaded cane. Burial blade. Blade of mercy. Hammer Ludwig's Holy Blade Retier Palash Shikage Rival Spare Take driver Tornatrus Lucarius Wheel Beast Claw Left hand weapons. Differs are like off hand weapons you can use as well. They are usually more ranged weapons. Hunter pistol, hunter blunderbuss. Repeating pistols, Ludwig's rifle, Evelyn cannon. Flame sprayer, Rosemarinas, hunter's torch, torch, wooden shield. And healing items. The following items are used primarily for healing yourself. Some restore HP while others remove status alignments. Blood vial, blood of Ariana, Yosefka's blood vial, antidote, blood of Adelia, sedative, and some attack items, or on use items that you can have with you Molotov cocktail, rope Molotov cocktail, poison knife, and throwing knife. And support items, I guess these might be like trinkets. Or not even that, something you can boost your attacks with. Beast blood pellets, blue elixir, lead elixir, oil urn. Pungent blood cocktail, pebble, numbing mist, fire paper, bolt paper. Shaman bone blade, bone marrow ash, bolt hunter's mark. Shining coin, monocular, tiny music box, hand lantern, and hunter's mark. This is from the front page. It's the hunter's mark. How could I miss that? Multiplayer items. These are items are strictly for use in online play. Wild blood register, beckoning bell, small resonant bell, sinister resonant. And here are some blood echo items. Blood clot, cold blood dew, thick cold blood, frenzied cold blood, kin cold blood, great one cold blood, old great one cold blood, and reward great one cold blood. And some marking items. Old hunter bone, tiny tornado dress, empty phantasm shell, hang, acre of a beret. Call beyond, sure, choir bell, beast roar, executioner's glove, messenger's gift, fortification materials. These are some of the most important items in the game when it comes to upgrading your character and attack power. Bloodstone shard, blood rock, twin bloodstone shards, and bloodstone shard. We have some gem items, red jeweled brooch, gold pendant and tear stone, key items, there are some keys you need in this game to continue progressing, Odeon's tomb key, lunarium key, lecture theater key, upper cathedral key, orphanage key.
unto Chief's emblem, chamber summons, on open and summons, small hair ornaments, ring of Petra. Queenly flesh, tonsil stone, yarnum stone, short ritual root chalice, messenger stop path, worn messenger stop path, black messenger hand. Yarnum's messenger hat, messenger head bandage, bloody messenger head bandage, white messenger ribbon, red messenger ribbon, and messenger phone dance. There are some insight items. Consuming one of these items increases your insight. High levels of insight increases your peace to them, make you more vulnerable to frenzy. Madman's knowledge, great one's wisdoms, one third of umbilical cord. Blood drink. Some different patches. Saw hunter's patch, powder cake hunter patch, old hunter patch, crow hunter patch, spark hunter patch, sword hunter patch, radiant sword hunter patch, wither hunter patch, cosmic eye watcher patch, and the shame cane horse patch. Here are the carol roots. Carol roots are special items that you can attach your character at the workshop in the hunter's dream. We have moon, eye, clockwise metamorphism, anti-clockwise metamorphism, claw mark, blood rapture. Odom Rife, Orkin Lake, Hair, Feigning Lake, Dissipating Lake, Clade, Great Lake. Clear deep. Some old thrones, radiance, corruption, and hunter. Here are some different tools. Blood gem workshop tool, rune workshop tool, workshop base extractor, and blood gems. Gems are very important items that allow you to customize your weapons. Each gem has a rating and higher rated gems have more powerful effects. And some, again, unique gems. We have the red blood gem, gold blood gem, and the hair god blood gem. And some about the attire. In this section, we present all of the many attire options Bloodborne provides for the more fashion-conscious player. Their effects on your defense aren't always dramatic, but the confidence they instill can be underestimated. Looking good can kill. Goes from head to toe, attires like a cage and a crown to dresses. Maybe witches have choir attire, executioner's attire, all the different attires you can have for styling your character. Hunter's attire and the city hunter's attire. Chapter 6, Hunter's Appendix This chapter title might suggest that some of its contents are mere footnotes in the grand scheme of Bloodborne, but that's certainly not the case. Learning about the diverse and mysterious characters your name is home to is one of the game's true joys. This is the place to come to if you want their full stories. It's also home to full shop lists, a trophy guide, and a very special interview with Bloodborne's director. Hidetaka Miyazaki Here's the different MP3 
species and their land flow. Where to meet the different embassies. German, the first hunter. German is a kindly old man whom you will first meet upon awaking in the hunter's dream. He is at the workshop's founder and is the very first hunter. We have Dol, a soulless and autumn nation residing in the hunter's dream. The Dol's purpose is to care for the new hunters and embolden in their flesh with power of the blood echoes. Gilbert. Gilbert is a foreigner to Yarmon, afflicted with the scourge, who traveled to the city in search of a cure. Chapel Samaritan Lonely old woman, Ariana woman of the night. Bigoted old man, provost villain. One of the really big lore characters, Adela, a nun of the healing church. Young girl and older sister, afflicted beggar. Alfred, hunter of wild bloods. Yosemka. Imposter Yosemka. Wild blood queen, analyze. Retired hunter Jura. Badges, the spider. And here's the shops of the game, what you can buy for. The Wandering Nightmares And there's the trophy guides It's like achievements in the game If you want to collect different trophies Drained of Blood, an interview with Hidetaka Miyazaki And he talks about the creation of the games and his vision It's really long It's a little bit bent on this side. This the art is amazing of this game. Humanity serves as a kind of shackle, keeping the transformation in its place. so much for watching. This has been a really nice video to make. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.